parts made of flexible materials can exist in an assembly in multiple states. Parts such as rubber seals, retaining rings, belts and springs. Configuring each part with optional inputs is the easiest way to do this. However, Onshape treats each configuration as a separate part. In the example of the spring, it is the same spring, but it's called out twice in the bomb, even though it has the same part number. If this assembly was released, the bomb would be incorrect. To make things worse, parts like springs may need to be shown in different positions, which may generate even more configurations and more incorrect bombs. Now, configuration inputs can be ignored by bombs and release management. A typical compression spring is defined by its outside diameter, wire diameter, number of turns and free length. An extra input has been added which controls which faces to measure from the assembly context. That configuration input can now be ignored by clicking on the three dot menu and selecting Exclude from Properties. An icon indicates that the input is excluded in all the places it appears. Now the assembly bomb shows the same spring in all assembled positions and all possible compression states as one part called out multiple times. An O-ring is another great example where the undeformed shape cannot be used in an assembly. O-rings come in standard sizes and different materials, but they can be used in radial or axial applications. The amount of squeeze is unique every time but the part number is always the same. So, one configuration input should be used for the size, one for the material, and as many as needed to get the required geometry. Filling out the configured properties to get the right part number is impossible. Onshape's unique configured variables give infinite permutations. Setting all those extra inputs as being excluded from the properties does just that, and now configured properties are much more manageable. The only thing to make sure of, in this case, is that the uncompressed configuration is the default. Finally, individual parts can be replaced to simplify an assembly. This is no different than the spring or o-ring example, but setting this thumb wheel to a configuration where the knurl is suppressed removes unnecessary detail from view. But because the thumb wheel with the knurl is the default configuration, during the release of the assembly, Onshape is checking to see if the default thumb wheel has changed, which it hasn't, so the part does not need to be up issued. Onshape's configurations provide simple and powerful ways to manage families of parts, and now by excluding inputs from properties to manage flexible parts with ease. Onshape's unique method of recording every design change means you never have to worry about making mistakes or trying out new ideas. You can always go back to any point in time and restore. However, if lots of changes have been made to other tabs in the document by you or someone else, those changes will be lost as well. Now, when you restore a branch, a new dialog, very similar to the merge dialog, details all the tabs that have been changed and all the tabs that have not changed since that moment in time. You can then set the overall restore strategy, which in most cases would be to keep the current branch intact, then selectively choose which tabs to restore. This is just another example of Onshape's superior data management tools. Documents with a lot of design activity and branches are now easier to navigate. Expanding the versions and history panel will show all the branches together so you don't need to use the left and right scroll arrows. Hovering over a branch will show a tooltip so you know which branch it belongs to, which is great if the branch is really long. Then right click to scroll to the bottom of the branch to see where it originated, or scroll to the top to see where it ends. This also works for merge lines, right clicking to scroll to the target or the source to make the branches easier to follow and reduce manual scrolling. Onshape's unique support mechanism enables Onshape support engineers and even Onshape developers to access a shared document to help troubleshoot issues.
An on-shape logo next to the person's avatar indicates that the document is currently being accessed by support. However, if the support engineer needs to make any changes, those changes can be harder to track. So now the versions and history panel displays an on-shape logo next to a modified branch. Expanding the branch and hovering over a history entry shows the support engineer's name followed by onshape in italics to make it clear who made the edit. Creating symmetrical profiles sometimes requires a lot of construction geometry, especially if there's nothing to reference. A new midpoint line removes these extra steps by defining the midpoint first, then the extent of the line in one direction. The result is a point with a midpoint constraint, then a line with a midpoint constraint. So to edit this new line type, simply edit or delete the point. To establish a datum axis on a feature such as a hole, there are a number of ways to place the datum symbol. On the hole itself, on the feature control frame for the hole, which adds it to the dimension group, and now the datum symbol can be attached directly to the diameter dimensions leader line, either on the elbow or the leader itself. Dragging the dimension group will keep the datum symbol in its relative position along the leader. This also applies to radial dimensions as well, to follow the correct drawing standards. Dimensions with additional text above, below, or to the left or right sent to justify by default. This behavior can now be changed with a new drawing property for text justification. You can set the default to left, to right, or to automatic. This last option controls the justification based on where the text is in relation to the extension lines. So if you drag it to the middle, it is center justified, and if you drag it to the left, it is right justified. This of course can be overridden for individual dimensions using the styles panel. The performance of vector expression evaluation in FeatureScript has been dramatically improved. Previously, performing simple vector math would take time to evaluate the expression before assigning the result to a variable. In this latest release, the evaluation is all taken care of and it's only the variable assignment that takes time, in this case, providing an 80% speed improvement. The best thing is, you don't have to modify your code, it just works. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.